All right, so even though you've only been learning about geometric sequences for the last uh, couple of weeks, what you may not realize is that you've actually done geometric sequences before or a geometric sequence before, and that's when you did compound interest. Compound interest is actually a geometric sequence. Uh, let's take a look at a little timeline so you can see why. All right, so here's my timeline, and I'm going to deposit $5,000 at 10% per annum. So you should remember a little bit about compound interest. But let's put some money in the bank. We put $5,000 in there. And then after one year, we'll have uh, $5,000 times. Now, remember the compound interest formula. A equals principal times 1 plus I to the power of N. Now, the interest is 10% or 0.1. And N is one year. So it's going to be 5,000 times 1.1. Now, if we go one more year, it's going to be $5,000 times 1.1, uh, but this time to the power of 2, because it's been two years. And I think you can see where we're going with this, 1.1 to the power of three years, 5,000 times 1.1 to the power of four years, and finally 5,000 times 1.1 to the power of six years. All right, so we've gone all the way through this, and this is how much money we will have at the end of six years, 5,000 times 1.1 to the power of six. And if I put that into my calculator, I get $8,857.81 if I round up. Okay, so looking at what compound interest was, you always had this formula that allowed you to find out how if you had this much principal and the interest rate was this, how many years would it be in there? But now what you really need to understand is this is just a geometric series. So compound interest can be found by saying that term N, and term N is going to be the final amount, is going to be equal to the number we start with, the first number in the sequence, A to the power of, uh, or sorry, A times the growth rate so the common ratio, which in this case is 1.1. So you have to be careful because it's not just 10%, it's 1 plus 10%. Uh, and then n minus 1 to the power of n minus 1. And so we've always said n here because it's been in there for uh, one year. But we use n minus 1 because the first term is the, is the money you first put in the bank account. The second term is one year, so two minus one. The third term is um no, the, the third term is three minus one, which is two. So it's actually just these formulas. They're actually the same thing. The only difference is, I suppose, is that in here the n means the number of years, whereas here n means the number of terms. Okay, so. What's to take away from this? Geometric sequences are compound interest questions, uh, or compound interest questions are geometric sequence questions, just uh, in, a, in disguise. Now, if you do come across one of these questions, you can use the compound interest formula, you can use uh, the geometric sequence formula. I probably prefer to use the geometric sequence formula, just so it shows that you understand that a compound interest question is a geometric sequence question but you need to be really, really careful about this n minus one. My suggestion is to draw it on a timeline because this is term one, this is term two, term three, four, term five, term six, and at the sixth year, you're actually finding term seven. People make mistakes because they think the sixth year is term six. Compound interest as a geometric sequence. And just one more thing before I go. Uh, I've sort of done a question where I'm saying, if I deposit $5,000 at 10% per annum, how much money will I have after six years? Of course, the question could be anything. It could be, what's the interest rate? It could be, how many years do I need to make $10,000? Whatever it is. But all of these questions are identical to the questions you've done in the past with geometric sequences.